praise, esteem, and honor to the Most High Yah by way of Yahusha Hamashiach, John 5, 39. Search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and there they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Allah him in you. I come in my Abba's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that come from Allah him only? Do not think that I will accuse you to Abba. There is one that accused you, even Moses, of whom you trust. If I had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words. Let's take ourselves to First Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians chapter four. We'll pick it up, probably by verse seven. For Elohim have not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto kadash. He therefore that despise despise not man, but Elohim, who have given unto us his ruach hakadash. So what are we dealing with tonight? We're dealing with this here, Mark chapter 6. Why do we read that he that despises, don't despise that man, but he really despises Elohim. Matter of fact, before we look at that, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy 7. We'll pick it up at verse 6. Verse 6, I don't want nobody. For thou art Kadesh people unto you, Yahuwah the Elohim. Yahuwah the Elohim have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all that are upon the face of the rats. Yahuwah did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of people. But because Yahuwah loved you and because he would keep the oath which he sworn unto your, your fathers, have Yahuwah brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Mizraim. Know therefore that Yahuwah the Elohim, he is Elohim, the faithful Elohim, which keep covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And he repaid them that hate him to their face and to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hate him and he will repay him to his face. So, what did it is to hate Elohim? Let's go to Leviticus 26. And let's just take a journey through the law. Because remember, he said, if you despise, or if you mad, or you hate, or you're angry, it is with Yahuwah. It is not with the man who's bringing you that word. When we look at Leviticus chapter 26, we'll pick it up probably about verse, uh, where we wanted that. About verse 14, after Leviticus 26, we'll go to Exodus chapter 20. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor or hate or despise my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I will also do this unto you. I will leave a point over you terror, consumption, the burning egg, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when none pursue you. And if you still will not steal for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. So the law states that when we, if we hate his judgments, if we hate or despise his word, that he will walk contrary unto us as he is, as we are walking contrary unto him. Let's take ourselves to Exodus chapter 20 now. And then from Exodus chapter 20, we'll go to Acts 13. We're just trying to establish a couple key points, lay a little foundation before we, uh, before we uh, get to what we're here for tonight. So Exodus chapter 20. Where is it? I want, I want, I want. Exodus 20 and 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. 
And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for Elohim is come to prove you. The Elohim is come to prove you, that his fear may be before your faces, that you sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where Elohim was. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Yasharal, You have seen that I have talked with you from Shamahim. They tell him, you know, they shouldn't make no gods and, and, and things of that nature. But he said in another place that they spoke well in stating this, that they would rather a man speak to them than Elohim speak to them. Let's go to Acts 13. Now we're establishing something because if a man despise, they despise Elohim. If a man is speaking the word, if he's sent to speak the word, whether if he serves in the office of an apostle, whether he serves in the office of a, a bishop, pastor, shepherd, or an evangelist, or a teacher, or a prophet, that individual should be speaking the words of Elohim. I'll get to them. I want to get ahead of myself. Acts 13. Acts 13 and 40, and 40 is sufficient. But we'll make it 36. Acts 13 and 36. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of Elohim, fell on asleep and was laid into his office and saw corruption. But he whom Elohim raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things which ye could not be justified by the Torah of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, you despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. So, you know, of course, that's taking us back to what we just read in Exodus. And we're looking at those who hate that if they hate you, it's not you that they hate. It's not you that they have a problem with. They have a problem with the word of Elohim. Now, we need to, to clarify that and what we're talking about. We're not talking about somebody telling somebody they're an Israelite and they don't want to hear that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the righteous obedience of faith, which is contained in the gospel of Yahusha HaMashiach to the esteem, honor, and praise of the Most High Elohim, Yahuwah of hosts, whose name is blessed and sanctified forever. That's who we're referring to. That's what people hate. See, nobody's hate. Nobody, nobody's abhorrent. The, 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 the dumbest thing that I've ever heard people say is, we have to return to Elohim as Israelites. That's pure lunacy pure stupidity there's nowhere in the word where he says return to me as an israelite he said return to him period period cease from doing evil and wash yourself and make yourself clean so when individuals hear whether they profess to be believers of the word or whether they don't when they hear that the word of yahuwah or what they just seem to think is a book written by men condemn and convict their actions and their lifestyles, they're angered by it. Because they're angered because someone is holding them accountable for their unrighteous behavior. Someone is calling to task the way that they're going. See, we think and we tell them, oh, you eating that pork, oh, woman, you wearing those pants, and you think that that's an issue when this word is supposed to be coming towards a person's heart for a transformation and a manifestation of the living Elohim and inside of them. So when the word is coming, it, it, it agitates because the word is coming to produce change. So the old person has to die. And they're fighting to stay alive. They're fighting to continually do their own will. See, an individual doesn't want to sacrifice themselves because the sacrifice you have to lose. So people have to lose pleasure. They have to lose pleasure and whatever it is that they're taking pleasure in. The Apostle Paul wrote in one of his epistle letters that in the last times men would be pleasers of themselves more than pleasers of Elohim. See, this is the part of the game of which we don't seem to understand. 
If an individual is a homosexual, they're pleased with that behavior that pleases that desire. If an individual is a fornicator or a whoremonger or an adulterer or a liar or a thief, or if they're envious or if they're jealous or if they're malicious or if they're spiteful, the, 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 if they're selfish, those actions please their flesh. They enjoy it. And now you're seeking to remove, they don't want to please themselves in Elohim. So therefore they look at his statutes and his judgments and his ordinances and most importantly, his gospel. The salvation which worketh in man by way of Yahusha HaMashiach and they hate it. They're offended by it. Then on the flip side, if you actually are supposed to be talking to people in the word, they end up being offended either by the power that Elohim has placed upon your hands, the wisdom that he has placed within you, or the miracles or works that an individual can work. And therefore, they're offended at that, which is what we're about to look at. Let's go to Mark chapter 6, verse 1. That is what we call, ladies and gentlemen, a segue. Segue. Mark 6 and 1. That's what we call a segue. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Shabbat was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joes and Judah and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Yahushua said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And there he could do no mighty work, save that he laid hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief and he went round about the villages teaching. So what do we see here? We see that they were offended at several different things. So then we need to isolate the several different things that they were offended at and see if we can come up with an example. So the first thing we're going to look at is they say, what wisdom is given unto this man? Let's take ourselves to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Let's do that first. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Let's take ourselves there. Let's see what we can find. Let's see what Yahuwah has to offer us this evening. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1. Who is as the wise man who know the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom make his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. So when we look at interpretation, we have the word pashar. That word means to interpret or to have a solution a solution, uh, a fix to a problem. When we come to that, we come with that, we see that we have pay, Sean, Rosh. So clearly, because if we got that pay, we have that open mouth. So we know we have that word, that command. We know that that word and command, or we see that one begins to open his mouth with the word of praise, which pairs you to the head. Because that is the solution of the interpretation of what the wise person brings. The wise person is bringing, knowing the interpretation of a thing. When we see the word for thing there, it is the bar. And that is the word for word. The word of Yahuwah, the debar, the commands. We have the Dalit, we have the bar, and we have the Rosh. So then when we see this here, we see how the... The firstborn son can cause one to enter into the door or enter into the house, if you so to speak, if you want to sit back and look at it that way, because you have the word. So the person who's bringing the interpretation or the solution to the word, he's showing you this wise man is showing you what the word means. He's showing you what the word means. And that word of praise will allow you to be paired to the highest or to Abba, or to Yahuwah. So let's take a look at that, and let's see how Yahushua himself went about to do that himself. 
So which direction would we like to go? Well, let's take ourselves to John chapter 5 and let's just do it like that. And we'll look at a couple times of when Yahusha dropped word and we'll get to the miracles in a moment. When he dropped the word and the people were offended at what he said. They were offended at the wisdom because his wisdom and the interpretation of what he was speaking was bringing about a solution. It was showing you how to get to the highest. It was showing you he was in interpreting the word. He was showing you what the word actually meant. People are offended at that for numerous different reasons of which we would not enumerate at this particular time. John chapter 5, verse 30. Because right, this is going to be, Yahushua going to be sitting back looking at how Abba bear witness to him. Because he came with a word of praise. He began to speak a word of praise to pray you to the highest of the Peshaw. So you know that, that Peshaw, that interpretation, that mouth, word being preached. A man said, you will not believe it even though a man said it to you. I work a wonder in your days and you're not going to believe it. Say, let Moses speak to us and not Elohim. That's why we looked at the stuff that we looked at. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge and my judge. This is John 5 and 30. I, my, I can of my own self can do nothing. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is just. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of Abba which have sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bear witness of me, and I know the witness which he witness of me is true. You sent unto John, and he gave witness unto the truth. But I received not testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which Abba have given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that Abba have sent me. So... He said he's got greater witness. Now we're going to take another look at something else in John 10. Because he's looking at his works. He's speaking of his works. Now we should know, at least most of y'all, should have enough wisdom and understanding to know that his works of which he came to work had already been bared witness to. So when we look at some of the things that are bared bear witness to, and we see that they be offended, that's why he said he couldn't work mighty works in that place. These people were offended at him. They say, who does he think he is? And we're going to look at another instance. Look at an instance that lines up with this in just a moment. But John 10 and 34. John 10 and 34. Matter of fact, hold on. Pause. Proverbs chapter 1. Now, it's not going to be the same word for interpretation in Proverbs 1, if that's the same word that I'm thinking is in Proverbs 1. And it's not the same word in Proverbs chapter 1. I just want y'all to know that. So, Proverbs 1 and 1. Proverbs, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, Malik of Yasharal. To know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. Because that's what we're working to. Because we're going to be dealing with this. We finally, y'all willing, can get to discernment this week. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtility to the simple. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will heal and increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attain under wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation. The words of the wise and their dark sayings. So... A wise man will be able to interpret or bring forth a solution to a saying. That solution to that particular word is going to be able to pair you to the highest. And that should be the objective because at the end of the day, we're trying to become one with Yahuwah, I will hope. I will hope that is your, your, your end goal. Nevertheless, John 10 and 34. Yahusha answered them, is it not written in your Torah, I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of Elohim came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom Abba have sanctified and sent into the world, thou blaspheme, because I said, I am the son of Elohim. If I do not the works of my Abba, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe me not, believe the works that ye may know and believe that Abba is in me and I in him. So he was telling him in this instance, if you don't believe the word that I've preached unto you, 
believe my actions, that they bear witness to the word. See, we're supposed to know the word to identify. That's why you who are willing, we're going to get to discernment this week on top of something else that we're dealing with, we're going to deal with. But we're starting with this, because this is not just about people not wanting to hear the word. See, because everybody take every passage in this book and apply it to them. And these passages may not apply to you personally because you may be doing something that you don't have no business doing. Everybody is not ordained to preach the word. Everybody's not ordained to bear witness to the word. We're all ordained to bear witness to the esteem and honor of Yahuwah and to praise his name. But we live in a society where we feel like everyone has a right to do certain things. I wish the word has never mandated. That's why we have so much confusion and so many doctrines and so many different things are where people seem to be befuddled, bamboozled, uh, flabbergasted, and overwhelmed with the things that they hear. Nevertheless, you're supposed to search the scriptures diligently to see if these things are so. And this is the things that we are not doing. To see, does the script say what you said it said? Does the word of Yahuwah bear witness to unto which you proclaim? And if it bears witness to which you proclaim, then all praises be to the almighty Yahuwah of hosts by way of his son, Yahusha, the anointed one. But if it does not bear witness to that, then this man is told a lie in the name of Elohim, and you might bear well with him. Nevertheless, let's look at Son in Proverbs 18, because it said that these people were offending at him. I'm not going in a direct all the way order with it, but y'all willing, we're tied up in a night nice little bow. Because when you look at something, when you are literally speaking the words of Elohim, if an individual hates y'all, they're going to hate you. Hamashiach told, told us what? If they hate me, they hate you. This he talking to his disciples now. That's who he was talking to. We'll get it in a minute. See, they was, he was talking to his disciples now. He wasn't talking to everybody in that instance. Proverbs 18 and 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Now, we came here to look at the word offended. Look what it said. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. This is harder to take down than a well-fortified city. Now, the word for offended is pasha, and this is to rebel. This is to revolt. This is to transgress. So when we sit back and we look at a brother who has been transgressed against, a brother who's been revolted or rebelled against, is harder to be won than a strong city. We have Pasha, so we have Pei, Shan, Rosh. So people who rebel or transgress, since they're hard to be won, they begin to see or experience the consumption of said word because they're going to be consumed by it and their rebellion. This is why it's difficult for them to be won. Now, let's go. When we look at Mark 6, it said that these people were offended at not only at Yahushua's works, but at his wisdom. At his wisdom, they were offended at it. Now, let's go back to John chapter 5. Well, we finish out John 5 because we started with John 5. I want y'all to think about that, right? Because it was hard for Yahushua to win these people because they were offended at him. They were not, and they were not really offended at Yahusha. They were offended at Elohim because all he was speaking was the words of Elohim and they found his words to be loathsome. See, he's telling these men that he was bearing witness, that Abba bear witness of him. And then he finished it out. You know, we started at verse 39 as we do. Praise y'all every week, every time. So let's look at a couple things of where these people were offended at his words. Let's go to Luke chapter 11. And then a couple of times we'll go look at a couple of times where the people were offended at the prophets aforetime. They were offended at the words that were put in their mouth to speak. They didn't want to hear that. So they didn't get the, the respect that they were owed. Luke chapter 11. Let me move around. There'd be so much stuff coming in my head, man. I got to make sure I keep it all set and and still for when we can uh, take off with that. Luke 11 and 37. I don't want to read all of it, but, oh boy, it all works. 
And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. And the master said unto him, Now do you Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter? But your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. See, a lot of people say, well, what type of man would sit down and not eat, wash before he ate? But the point of what he was doing is the man's wisdom makes his face to shine. And he has the interpretation of a thing because he was trying to illustrate a point. It's not that this man just didn't want to sit down and not wash before dinner. He was trying to show forth a point. So maybe he could bring forth a solution to their problem. These men didn't want a solution to their problem. And see, that's what comes down with a lot of people is they don't want solutions to their problems. They just want to complain about their problems, wallow in their problems or, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Or extend their problems upon other people. See, men don't do that. If you're a man and you have a problem, you come up with a solution for the problem. If you can't come up with a solution for the problem, then you attain unto wise counsel who can assist you in crafting a solution to said problem. Men do not wallow in their, in their sorrows, nor wallow in their problems. That's why a lot of people don't want to be healed because they like the attention that they get from their pain. They like the attention they get from their problems. The objective is not to stay in a particular state of lowliness, not lowliness is for its humility, but to, to, to arise out of that because it is Yahuwah who heals all your diseases. So if you're hurting and you need healing, then why wouldn't you go to the chief physician? He said, a physician don't go to them that are whole, but them that are sick. So therefore, if there's mollifying ointment for your wounds and there's healing medicine for your soul, then why wouldn't you seek unto it? Nevertheless, ye fools, did not he which made that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms of such things as you have and behold, all things are clean unto you. See what he said? If I, if I give a little money to the Pope, then I'm, I'm absolved from my wickedness. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of Elohim. These ought you have to done and not to leave the other undone. So guess what he's sitting here telling them as he's bringing his wisdom. You pass over judgment. So you don't want to judge things correctly. You don't want to judge things righteously and justly. You don't want to love Elohim. See, don't, it's not about loving each other. Because if you love Elohim, you will love each other. I tell you that repeatedly. You can't love me and you don't love Yah. That's impossible. But if you love Yah, you'll certainly love me. Those two things go hand in hand. Because if you don't love me, I guarantee you don't love Yah. If you say that you love Yah, because if you love Yah, you would do no evil to me. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. That's what the Apostle Paul wrote in his epistle to the Romans. Works no ill to his neighbor. So if you work ill to someone, then the love of Elohim definitely could not be present in you or not present in you in that moment. Either or, because there could be a time where you, you work ill or you offend someone. That doesn't mean the love of Elohim is not present. It wasn't present at that moment. But that's the thing that we pass over. We, we more big on loving each other, which is excellent. Because that is the second greatest commandment of all. But we overlook the greatest commandment of all and make ourselves feel comfortable enough to reproach and disrespect and profane and blaspheme the name of the living Elohim and still say that we love him. We're not supposed to be overlooking that. Now, he told them what their problem was and he gave them a solution. Clean the inside of your heart. Clean your inward parts. You bathing every day. You washing your clothes, you ain't washed your heart. Giving them a solution to the problem. Nevertheless, warn to you Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greeting in the markets, and warn to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Say, so you filthy, you wicked, and we don't even know it. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying, thou reproach us also. And he said, woe unto you also, ye lawyers, for you laid men with burdens, grievous to be born. And ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for you build the sepulchre of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. See, there it is right there. Let's pause for a moment. You built the sepulchres of the prophets, 
and your fathers killed them. Well, let's look and see. Second Chronicles 36. Second Chronicles 36 after that, Second Kings chapter one. You built the graves for, for the prophets. Your fathers did it. Because a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, amongst his own kin, and in his own house. Well, when we look at these prophets, they were in their own country, amongst their own kin. Yet they didn't get the kabod, they didn't get the respect, they didn't get the honor that Elohim had bestowed upon them. Not that they bestowed upon themselves, because y'all know what the words say. Matter of fact, y'all know what the law say. A man ain't a prophet lest y'all appear to him in a vision or a dream. You got a lot of niggas say they prophets. And if they said y'all ain't appeared to them, then we know, you're lying. we know you ain't a prophet just on the strength of that. Just on the strength of that. 2 Chronicles 36 and 11. 11. Zechariah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign and reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. He did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah his Elohim and humbled him himself, humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of Yahuwah. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar who made him swear by Elohim, but he stiffened his neck, hardened his heart from turning unto Yahuwah Elohim of Yashorah. But over all the chief priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of Yahuwah, which he hollowed in Jerusalem. And Yahuwah Elohim of their Abba sent to them by his messengers, rising up beat times and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of Elohim and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of Yahuwah arose against his people until it was there, there no remedy. They despised the word. They misused. They killed these men. They hated. Let's look at something. Second Chronicles 20 and 20. It's Second Chronicles 20 and 20. Before we get to that, Kings. Come on over here, right? Let's look at that. Praise y'all for the word. It might be first like this here, man. I always say the wrong chapter. I know it's 22 or 22. I do it every time. No, oh, that ain't the one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just mention it. We need to look at it. Let's look at first Chronicle 20, man. That's what happens when you get old. Everything don't be. It ain't first Chronicle 20, I can tell you that right now. It is second Chronicle 20, and I know that. Second and 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 I know there was uh, and I knew that all the time. Second Chronicle 24, man. I'd be tripping. I need to go with I'd be normal junk, I'd be tripping, man. Second Chronicle chapter 24, right? Let's pick this up by probably about uh verse 15. Second Chronicle chapter 24, verse 15. But Yehoda waxed old and was full of days when he died. 130 years old was he when he died. They buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Yasharah, both towards Elohim and towards his house. And after the death of Yehoda came the princes of Yehuda and made obeisance to the king, then the king hearkened unto them. And they left the house of Yehuda, Elohim, and the Abbas, and served groves and idols. And the wrath came upon Yehuda and Jerusalem for this their trespass. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto Yahuwah. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. They are offended. They despised that word. And the Ruach of Elohim came upon Zechariah, the son of Yehudah, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith Elohim, Why transgress ye the commandments of Yahuwah that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken Yahuwah. He also, uh, he, hath, he hath also forsaken you. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of Yahuwah. So just because he told them, why do you think you're going to prosper when you disobeying the word? They decided to stone him. So again, that's that Pashah. They are offended. They are revolting. They are rebelling. They are transgressing. So we see when they were offended at Yahusha, it's because they were rebelling against him. They were revolting. They were transgressing the word. That's why I say a brother offended is harder to be warned. He wasn't going to be able to win these people because they were offended at him. But yet they were not offended at him. They were offended at he who they say is their Elohim. This is why Hamashiach said in the 16th chapter of John, they will kill you. They will put you out of the synagogue and they will kill you and think that they do Elohim service. 
See, we're supposed to know our culture. We're supposed to know our history. And no, I, I, D.L. Hughley was on being interviewed and he told the truth. And I noticed, and I, and I know this to be true. You tend to be killed by the people of whom amongst you live. Of course, it's going to be a lot of black on black crime because that is who you live. See, white people live amongst white people and when they kill each other, you don't hear white on white crime. Y'all done heard me say that. That's white on white. That ain't got nothing to do with me because you're going to be killed by whom you live around. So when you look at it, of course, the nations are not going to kill the prophets. Of course, the nations were not going to kill the apostles. They didn't live around them. They weren't sent to them. But when he did send him to them, they hearkened to these men. Let me show you why I said that. Come to Ezekiel. Come to Ezekiel, right? Let's keep 2 Kings 1 on there. Come to Ezekiel chapter 2. After Ezekiel chapter 2, we go to Acts 28. Keep that 2 Kings now. Acts 28 and then right back to Acts 13. And matter of fact, I got enough. Pray the land. Pray the land. Ezekiel chapter 2. You can pick it up at about verse. Verse 1 is fine. Verse 1 ain't going ain't gonna to hurt nobody. And he said unto me, son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Ruach entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Then I heard him that spake unto me, and he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Yasharal, to a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith Yahuwah thy Elohim, Yahuwah Elohim. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Yet they shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. He said, they don't know that a prophet have been among. He said, tell them whether they hear, whether they don't want to hear. Because they some rebellious niggas. They don't listen. That and thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, thou dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. For they are. Let's come over here to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel 3, verse 4. I was supposed to went straight to Ezekiel 3, but it worked out either way. And he said unto me, son of man, go thee, get thee unto the house of Yasharal. Speak with them by words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Yasharal. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language whose words thou cannot understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Yasharal would not hearken unto thee, for they would not hearken unto me. For all the house of Yasharal are impudent and hard-hearted. See, this is what we tell you. We got it because we're looking at why did Amashiach say what he said. Yahuwah himself told Ezekiel the high priest, if I would have sent you to some people who couldn't understand what you say, a strange people of a strange speech, they would have definitely listened to you. But you're not going to get that honor amongst this people because this is a rebellious people. This is a stiff-necked, hard-hearted, impudent people, obstinate obstinate so they not gonna listen they not gonna believe that's why you shouldn't be shocked that people don't believe the word like people say search to me i don't be shocked because i know that he's already said this so my mind and my heart and my spirit is perfectly prepared for said situation acts chapter 20 mm -hmm. you gotta have your mind right for it the word is good he right all the time. All the time. Acts 20 and 19. 28 19, excuse me. Acts 28 19. But when the Yahudim spake against it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to do Acts 28 and 17. Acts chapter 19. And then Acts chapter 13. It came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Yahudim together. And when they were come together, he said to them, men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people 
or customs of our Abbas, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hand of the Romans, who when they had examined me would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Yahudim spake against it, just like they spake against it with Pilate because they were rebelling, because they were imputed people, because they did not want to hear the word of which Paul was bringing unto them. I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because for the hope of, of Yasharal, I'm bound with this chain. So know that Paul said he wasn't calling, making an appeal unto Caesar because he had a problem with his own people. He understood why they were doing what they were doing. He didn't have no, no altar or reason to accuse his own people. They said unto him, we neither received letters out of Yehuda concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou think for us concerning this sect. For we know that everywhere it is spoken again. So these people got their man locked up. And these people back in the city, like, well, we ain't heard nothing about it. We don't know nothing about it. Niggas just rebellious hearts. And when he had appointed him a day, they came, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Elohim, persuading them and concerning, concerning Yahusha, both out of the Torah of Moses and out of the prophets from morning until evening. So everywhere they said it was spoken against, rebel against those who are preaching the gospel of Yahusha, rebel. Don't give them honor. You're not going to get honor amongst your own kin. Even when you look at Cornelius, even when you look at what Paul was talking about with the Gentile, it happened to them and they weren't even preaching. And some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after, after, departed after that. Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Ruach HaKadosh by Isaiah the prophet under our office, saying, go to unto this people and saying, here you shall hear and shall not understand, seeing you shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed that they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you, the salvation of Elohim is said unto the Gentiles and they will hear it. Let's go to Acts 13 now, since I had to do it like that. He said, we still got Luke 11 on that. He said, since you don't want to hear it, he said, I bet these Gentiles are here then. Since you don't judge yourself unworthy of salvation. Mm -mm. We in Acts 13 and 42, just picking up from the verse where we stopped at when we were there the first time. Acts 13, 42. And when the Yahudim were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Shabbat. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Yahudim and the religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the Khan of Elohim. And the next Shabbat came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Elohim. But when the Yahudim saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. Again, when the wisdom of a man make his face to shine and the boldness causes his face to change. What is that? And said it was necessary that the word of Elohim should first have been spoken to you. But seeing you put it from you and judging, judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For hope so have you who have commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou should be for salvation unto the ends of their wraths. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and esteemed the word of Yahuwah. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of Yahuwah was published throughout all the region. But the Yahudim stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. And look what Paul and Barnabas do. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Ruach HaKadah. Now, why did they dust their feet off? Matthew 10. Because if they don't want to honor and respect you, shake them off. You know what Jay put it. Get the dirt off your shoulder. You ain't got no business around here. Look at They don't want to believe it. Then, oh, well. See, the, let me tell you something, right? The biggest problem and error and, in a, and the reason why the preaching of the gospel is probably majorly ineffective 
is because people try to force people to believe it, to make them open to hear it, to make them follow. Boy, I'm going to tell it to you, and if you reject it, just like he said, you judge yourself unworthy of salvation. I'm going to holler at you. I can't make you believe nothing, nor will I continually force feed you the word. Because all it's going to do is make your heart harden more. If y'all got their heart hardened, ain't nothing I can do to soften it. Ain't no word can break it if he don't want it to be broken. But if y'all want that heart to be humbled, you better believe you will be humbled. Whether it be today, whether it be tomorrow, you will be humbled. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. These 12 Yahoo Shah sent for. And commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any of the Samaritans, into ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Yasharal. And as you go preach, saying this, saying, The kingdom of Shamahim is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. And to whatsoever city or town you shall in enter, inquire in it. Is worthy. And there, and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your shalom come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your shalom return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor your words, when you depart out of that house or city, Shake off the dust of your feet. If they don't want to receive it, he says, shake them off. Meaning, I'm just like what he said in Ezekiel, which we didn't read. I didn't preach the word to you. I'm free from all blood on my hands. That means y'all pretty much, we done with you. You don't want to believe it? Cool. You ain't got to receive me, baby. You ain't got to believe nothing I say. That's fine. You never seen Yahoo Shah get mad because they didn't want to be. He straightened them because of their behavior. He never got mad because they didn't want to hear. That's on you, baby. It's your soul. He say, hey, I didn't come to judge but to save. He said, you have one word which will judge you at the last day. I know the word that my Abba give is everlasting life. That's on you, baby. You take that how you want to. How you want to. Come on, keep on coming over here to Matthew chapter 10, though, right? Come on to Matthew chapter 10, right? Stay in 11, I'm sorry. 11 and 20. Since you don't want to listen, this is what he say. This is what he say for you since you don't want to listen. He said, then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe unto you, Kozaran, woe unto the Bethesda. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Zidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ash. I would have went to them Hamites, boy. They would have repented. Huh? Let's take a look at that. A prophet being honored in his own pray the land. You see how he working? We're gonna go to first King chapter 17. We're gonna get to second King chapter one, y'all willing. I got time. I got time. I got time, cuz. I got time. Praise y'all for the word. Look at it here, first King 17, right? 17 and 8. We're going to come another spot in the mix. See, what? Just work with me. And the word of Yahuwah came unto him, saying, Arise and get thee to Zeratah, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zeratah. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And she said she was going, and as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. She said, as Yahuwah the Elohim live, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and bar in a barrel, a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said unto her, fear not, and go and do this thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Now we have to keep on going, but you know why we read this? Because this woman is of Tyre and Zidon. Now let's look at son in Luke chapter 4. Matter of fact, pause. Pause. Second Kings chapter 4. Just bear with me. I'm going to tie it all in together. Just bear with me. Chapter 5. My apologies. I got to read these two stories before I read what I was going to read. Second Kings chapter 5 verse 1. Now Naaman, the captain of the host, king of Syria, was a great man with his master 
and honorable because by him you who had given deliverance unto Syria, he was a mighty man and, and a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and they brought away a captive out of the land of Yashara, a little maid. She waited on Naaman's wife. She said unto her mistress, would Allahim, my master, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. One went in and told his master, saying, thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Yasharal. And when the king of Syria said, go to and go, and I will send a letter unto the Malik of Yasharal. He departed, took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, 10 chains of raiment, all that good old stuff. So drop to verse eight. And it was so. When Elisha, the man of Elohim, heard the king of Yasharal had rent his clothes, that he sent to the Malik, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let, come, let him now come to me, come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Yasharal. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of Yahuwah's Elohim, strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and, and, and Farafar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Yasharal? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, but thou have not done it, how much rather than when he saith to thee, wash and be clean? I didn't want y'all to pause, right? When you look at the words, you got these people be doing these altar calls in these churches and all the stuff they be doing. I want y'all to do all this flopping and falling out on the floor and all this type of stuff. And if these people ask you to do a great thing where well, you would have done it, but why we can't be just as simple as washing yourself by the washing of the water of the word to cleanse the wicked insides like we read in Luke chapter 11? Why we just can't do that and be clean? It's really just that simple. He ain't even asking you to do some great and mighty thing. Because if there was some great and mighty thing you had to do, most people probably would do it. All he's saying is, just wash and be clean. He said that you, got, you must be born again and you cannot enter the kingdom of Elohim unless you be born by water in the Ruach. Nothing amazing. Nothing great and mighty and wonderful. Wash you, make you clean, cease from doing evil from before my eyes, from the washing of water of the word, that he might sanctify it, that it might be an esteemed synagogue, an esteemed house, an esteemed body, an esteemed spouse, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And when people hear that, they are offended at the simplicity of the gospel of Yahusha. Because what Elisha told him was the simplicity of the gospel. Wash and be clean. It's just that simple. And that's what makes people offend. That's what makes people rebel. That's what makes people transgress. That's what makes them revolt. And that's why a prophet is not without honor. Except amongst his own kin, in his own country, and in his own house. Nevertheless, then he went down, dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of Elohim, and his flesh came again like unto him of the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he was ready to give Elisha all type of money. We know the story that because his, 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 his servant took that money and he ended up becoming a leper. Come over here to Luke chapter 4. See, I read that. We read that for a reason. Luke chapter 4. I don't know what time it is. I got to gauge it. I'm 53 minutes in. I know I started at about 7.40 on the dot. So I know I got about 20 more minutes of air time. Luke 4 and... and, and uh. We started at 16. So again, you can see why they hated him. And after we look at that, we'll take another instance and we'll go to the book of Samuel. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up as it was his custom was. He went into the synagogue on Shabbat and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Ruach of Yahuwah is upon me. Because he've anointed me to preach the bazaar to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are brutal. He preaching freedom from sin and death. They get offended at this. To preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah, he closed the book and gave it to the minister. Sat down. The eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears and, and all bear, wit, bear him witness and wonder that the grace's words were proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? They said unto him, you will surely say unto me pro this proverb, physician, heal thyself. For whatsoever we heard done 
Capernaum do also here in thy country. See what you also do with them strangers. Do it over here. Do it for us. See Paul. Romans 11. Romans 11. Which where, where would I want to do it? What would I want to use? Romans 11 and uh, 2, I suppose. Elohim has not cast away his people which he foreknew. What? Well, make it verse 1. I say then, have Elohim cast away his people? Elohim forbid. For I also am a, a Yashraelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Elohim has not cast away his people which he foreknew. What? Know you not what the scriptures say of Elijah? How he make intercession to Elohim against Yashrael, saying, Yahuwah, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thy altars, and I'm left alone and they seek my life. This is, and, and, and we, I was going to get to that. This is why Elijah was sent to the widow woman of Tyre and Zidon. Because Yasharal were trying to kill him. Which we're going to get to in 2 Kings chapter 1 in just a moment. But what saith the answer of Elohim unto him? I reserve to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Well, now we done gave it away, so we can do it. You know that Ahab and his wife Jezebel were killing the prophets. Obadiah was hiding the prophets by 50 in a cave not to kill them. Remember, Elijah went to the people and said, how long will you halt between two opinions? If Baal be Elohim, serve him. But if Yahuwah be Elohim, serve him. Because the people were revolting and transgressing against the men who were. See, we didn't even talk about the people revolting against Moses. We haven't even went and looked at how David was a prophet and Saul revolted against him and despised and hated him. And he was Saul's son-in-law. He was not without honor except amongst his own kin. The same way David was not without honor, except against his own kin, because Absalom was trying to kill him. We looking at how the prophets were not without honor in their own country. In their own country, they were despised. Going to Gentiles and they were accepted. Going to strangers and they were accepted. They didn't revolt. We revolt. What is this? That's not the first man I want, man. Where is it at? Where is it at? It might not be. There it is. No, that's not it either. Nevertheless. In Deuteronomy 32, he tells you that he would move you to jealousy with, a, with, with a people who are not a people. Maybe that would cause you to believe. Come on back to Luke chapter 4. Cause we running short. We getting short. We getting short. We getting short. We getting short. Verse twenty four, and he said, "Truly I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country." But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Yasharal in the days of Elijah, when Shamahim was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Zidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Many lepers were in Yasharal in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. And rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he went, but he passing through the midst of them with his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on Shabbat. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. They were astonished at his teaching because his words had power. And all of these are segues for the rest of the week. Praise y'all for it. So let's come back to Luke chapter 11. Well, let's get this Acts 19 first. Let's not, let's not neglect my Acts 19. You could drop 2 Kings. You just enumerated that. So, yeah. Let me make sure I got the right spot. Acts chapter 19, verse 6. Acts 19 and 6. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Ruach HaKadosh came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. All the men were about 12. 
when he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of Elohim. But when divers were hard and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the master Yahusha, both Yahudim and Greek. See, when them people went to talking crazy, he got from around because they weren't going to accept him. You know, when we look at that again, people who rebelling, they rebelling, that same word, they're going to experience the consumption of that word that they're rebelling against. So come over here to 1 Samuel chapter 10, where you'll see that same statement. Is this, this ain't that Joseph's son? We know him. Even in the beginning, Saul wasn't accepted. They didn't want to accept him either. 1 Samuel chapter 10. You pick it up at verse 9. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, Elohim gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And the Ruach of Elohim came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, what is this that has come on unto son, the son of Kish? Is Saul among the prophets? And one of the same place answered and said, but who is their father? Therefore, it became a proverb as Saul also among the prophets. Who is this mighty man to have all this wisdom? Is this not Joseph's son? We know his whole family. Where does he get these mighty works from? Now, come back to Mark chapter 6. Because it stated that Amashiach couldn't even work mighty works in this place because of their unbelief. So, again, it was because they didn't believe. See, individuals look at because the individual don't necessarily. See, sometimes it just be you and, and what you saying. They might come to look at you don't really live what you saying or they don't feel like you don't feel like you don't know what you're talking about. But nevertheless, look at verse uh, five again. And he could there do no mighty work, say that he laid hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief and he went around about teaching. So it says that Yahushua marveled at their unbelief. The word for marvel is tamah. It's to be amazed or dumbfounded. We have a tile. We have the mean. We have a hay. So when we look at that mean, we can look at that as that is the question. Then it's to behold. So then we put the towel and we look at the mark. So when Yahushua looked at it, he behold and question, are these people even Elohim's people? Because how could they not believe this? I'm amazed they can't believe. And I can understand why he would feel that way. When we, when we look in the word and we look at all the prophets who were rejected, when we look at all the men of Elohim who were persecuted against. None of the people believed them. See, let's go to John chapter 15, right? John chapter 15, right? Verse 19, verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they, if they kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. See, because these people don't know the person that sent them, that's, it's easy for us at that point to question, do you have the mark or the seal or the covenant of Elohim with you? Because let's take ourselves to John chapter 8, verse 42. Yahushua said unto them, if Elohim were your father, you would love me, for I proceed forth and came from Elohim. Neither came I of myself. Ye of your, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You of your Abba the devil, and the lust of your Abba you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth, because there's no, no truth in him. And when he speak a lie, he speak of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. 
And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of, which of you convince me of a sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of Allahim hears Allahim's words. You therefore hear them not because you are not of Allahim. This is what we're looking at it when he's marveling and he's looking at, behold, I have to question if you are the children of Allahim. I have to question if you're the children of the covenant because you don't believe. You are offended. You're rebelling and revolting against the words and the works that I'm manifesting showing that I come from Allahim. You're offended in it. This man healed a woman on the Shabbat. They were offended. This man ate, picked corn on the Shabbat. They were offended. We didn't finish Luke 11, which we finna get to it. They killed everyone who was sent unto them. What do we want, man? Verse 54. Yahusha answered and said, answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It's my Abba that honor me, of whom you say that he is your Allahim. You have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and I keep his saying. Your Abba Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Yahudim unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old. And thou hast seen Abraham, Yahushua said unto them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Yahushua hid himself and went out of the temple, and going through the midst of them, so passed by, because the just Yahuwah in the midst. He always slides through in the midst on these niggas. Every time this man opened his mouth, they were offended. They were offended because they despised the word. Because he that despises it don't despise man, he despised Elohim. This is why our prophet is not... We quick to scream, the word was given unto Jacob. It was shown unto Yasharal. No other nation had received this judgment. And you hated every last one of them too. You no good, rotten bastard nigga you. You didn't love them. You didn't guard them. You didn't proclaim them in righteousness. He said, who are you to take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you cast instruction in behind your back. Mm -hmm. We don't like to hear that part. See, you're not building us up, brother. Got to tear that wicked man down to build a righteous man in his place. That's what Yahushua did, destroyed the body of sin, that he might rebuild it in the righteousness of Elohim, that we all might be quickened and made alive through his sacrifice. That's what you got to do. Destroy that body of sin and try trying to keep it alive. That's why they killed the prophet. That's why they never received no honor. We don't like you niggas. You don't tell us what we want to hear. Verse 47, Luke 11. We don't like them niggas, man. He tell us we need to change our life. We're going to rebel. But you ain't rebelling against me. You ain't rebelling against nobody but you, you big dummy. How you going to rebel against a person who give you life, you big dummy? Woe unto you, for you build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly you bear witness that you allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you built the sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of Elohim, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was said from the foundation of the world may be required of their generation. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, which perished between the altar and the temple. Truly I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge, and you entered in not yourselves, and then that were entering in ye hindered. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they may accuse him. So they offended at everything he's saying. Luke, remember in John 9, he said, are we blind also? He said, if you were not blind, you would have no sin. But since you say you say you see, your sin remains. It's still there. It's still there. Ain't it funny that when Jonah went unto the whole place of Nineveh, that they all repented at the hearing of his preaching? Yasharal sit back and say, when Jeremiah came and told him, if you don't repent, he's going to destroy this house. We said, we got to kill this nigga. I know y'all ain't sent you to say that. We got to kill him. Why he don't get the same honor? And it's the part that tripped me out. If niggas say they know the word so much, when really they be antagonizing people and saying they being persecuted, when these people be ready to bust you upside your head, you know what I'm saying? Because you provoking people in stupidity. First Thessalonians 2 and 11, while, we, while, while I'm listening, go ahead and grab that. See, see, they don't want to hear the word. See, man, look here, man. Boy, you preach the word, keep it moving, B. They take it, they take it, they don't, they don't. But one thing for certain and two things for sure. Yes, sir. One thing for certain and two things for sure. If you son of Elohim, they not going to take it. They not going to accept it. 
I've been telling y'all for the longest. Don't let these people deceive you and think it's the white man that's going to kill you. Don't let these people deceive you and, and make you think it's the Arabs that's going to kill you. I'm talking about if you're standing for the word of Yahuwah. It's going to be people who say that Yahuwah is the Elohim, that I serve the God who created heaven and earth. They're going to be the ones who going to kill you. And the book is clear on that. Oh, don't get me wrong. The nation going to gather up. They're going to make war with the believers of the living God. They're going to they gonna do all that. But boy, who going to take them? Who going to take you to them? Who took Samson to the Philistines, man? That was you. You took Samson to the Philistines. You know what I'm saying? You did that. Who killed Abel? His own kin. He ain't getting no honor in his own house. Own brother killed him. Who hated Jacob? Own brother hated him. There's a template of showing you spiritually of what was going to come down the line. Ishmael didn't like Isaac. It's all this is going to come on down the line. There's a point for that. There's a there's a there's the there's the gospel of Yahusha that's under the surface of these actual events with these people. Korah rising up against Moses. You know what I'm saying? They were envious of they, they didn't want to give him. We just as good as you are. Like it's a competition. Moses say, envy it thou for my sake. I hope to y'all that all these people be promised. I don't care nothing about that, man. Same way Mashiach told him, man, if they with us, they can't be against us. I don't care nothing about that because they don't run with us. People don't took their word because they extremely idiotic, ain't been sent to preach it, ain't skilled enough to manifest it, and they got people questioning the words of the living Elohim. They think they take it as a joke. Because you a joke. Now you got this man named profane and blaspheme in the street. And you don't seem, it don't seem to bother you. But when you actually, because people who want the esteem and the honor, that's the people that force it on people. Those who have the Ruach of Elohim in them and know the word. Hey man, I'm going to tell it to you, bro. Hey, we can reason all day long. And we can reason humbly. And we could agree to disagree. And I'm going to move on. Or if you outright reject it, I'm going to dust my feet off on you. But I'm not going to force you and repeatedly come to you over and over and over again to make you believe it. I'm going to preach the word in season and out of season as is instructed. That's what it, and that's just referring back to what Ezekiel was told. Tell them whether they hear or forbear. But that don't mean to force feed people stuff, man. Drop the word and go about your business. That's what Amashia told you. Amashia told them, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if they all be blind, they all going to fall in the ditch. Leave them people alone. Speak the word. If they receive it, praise be to Yah. If they don't, praise be to Yah. It's his will either way. Everybody's not going to take it. Reason why? Because everybody don't want to change their life. And people just want to rebel. That's why we started with the stuff that we looked at in the law in the beginning. Some people just want to rebel. You can't do nothing for a rebel. Every summer, most of all of us know all of us had a period in our youth when you rebelled against your parents to a certain extent. Some worse than others. It was nothing your parents could tell you when you had that mind that you was going to do what you wanted to do. It took an event for you to see that you needed to humble yourself and hearken unto the instructions for you to stop rebelling. And that's usually when you hit between 14 and 17, you feel like your nuts dropping. You're smelling yourself. You think you're grown. You can't tell me nothing. I know what I'm doing. This is my life. But be careful with that because you who will say, you know what? It is your life. Let me see what your end going to be. And he'll give you over to your desires when you continuously want to rebel. Don't do that. But again, it's your choice to do it. I can't. It's like if you take the word out to play. You can't force your wife not to cheat on you. You can't force your husband not to cheat on you. That's a decision that they have to make to remain loyal unto you. You can't stop them from rebelling against you. Because they're supposed to remember the commitment and the act of loyalty that they have towards you. That they would never transgress against you. But you can't stop them. Because if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. You could tell, you could give a man all the wisdom. And, boy, you need to go home to your wife, boy. But if he don't want a man up, you can't make it. And that's why Yahushua told you, if they don't want to receive it, dust your feet off on them and keep it moving. You can't, you can't do that. You can't. So you should not be shocked when people don't believe. 
You should not be shocked. Now, again, of course, now, if our own Messiah was amazed, like, well, I done healed these people. I done rolled people from the dead. You know what I'm saying? I done healed people of the palsy, stopped women with issues of blood, healed a man with a withered hand. They still don't believe it. And you think they're going to believe you, nigga? If they didn't believe that, boy, if they didn't believe in this man part of the Red Sea and killed the Egyptians firstborn and gave them manna from heaven, you think they're going to believe you? When we just read in Ezekiel, he said they're not going to believe you because they ain't believe me. They imputed it hard-hearted. They a rebellious house. So why are you shocked? This is the part. Of, do we actually believe what's written? Or are we just doing this stuff because we think there's something to recite or something to do? That's the question. That's what I want to know. I ain't shocked. I didn't have that man tell me, F you, nigga. I'll beat you up. I ain't that far away from you. All because I told him, brother, can you prove to me what you're saying? F you, nigga. It ain't about Jesus. I ain't said it was. I wasn't shocked that he reacted in this way. I know this man is devoid of the Ruach of the living Elohim. He's carnal. That's how he's going to react. He don't have anything in him to restrain his behavior. So it's not shocking. Nevertheless, man, let's get out of here, man. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Just don't be shocked, man. Now, this is talking about somebody who's in the office of Elohim to manifest the word. They're not going to get the respect amongst their own people. But strangers will accept them. It just is what it is. I didn't get to it, but you can see that in John 4. When Yahushua went to the Samaritan woman, they said, can you, let's, let's grab it real fast. They wanted him to stay around there. What about the woman? What about the woman who had the, what, the little girl who had the devil on her? One spot says she was Greek. Another one says she was a Canaanite. She said, even the, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. What about the Roman centurion who told Yahushua, man, don't even go in the house. He said, I'm a man under authority. I tell men to go and they go. Say Yahushua, I was marveled. He was amazed. He said, I ain't never seen that type of faith in Yahshua. I ain't never seen one of y'all believe me like this. I ain't never seen it. And then we shock when we go to our people when they don't believe it. Come on, man. We got to be wiser than that. Matter of fact, let me grab that real quick. What is that? Mark, child, man, come over here to Matthew, man. I didn't want you to see that right. I know I'm going past my time, man. I feel good right now. Praise y'all for the word. That's all I can tell you. The word good is right. That's one thing for certain and two things for sure. It's definitely right. It definitely do something for you. You lay it on your heart and actually believe it and obey it. Not obey it because you want to show forth somebody that you righteous, but obey it because you believe in it. As, as the saying like Joel B, Joe M. B. like to say all the time, trust the process. Trust the process of righteousness that the word will manifest in a man if he take hold on to it and cleave unto it with his whole mind, heart, and soul like the law teach you to do. See, but if, see, but if we do that, that would be right. See, that would give us power. And why would we want power with Elohim when we can just stay powerless and just be niggas messing with people? Because that's what we like to do. We like to remain niggas and mess with people. I can't recall where it's at, man. I have to find another time. I'm running late anyway. I can't hold y'all much longer. Let's get this done for man. I just want you to know what the words say. See the power of Elohim. Let it rest in your heart. It do wonders for you. Even if you ain't getting no offer to preach the word, at least your soul be saved. I would hope that would be enough. I wouldn't care if I ain't preached the word at all. As long as my soul gets saved, that was my number one priority from day one. I don't care about nothing else. I can't speak for nobody else. I don't care about nothing else. Nothing else. Period. Other than saving my soul. Period. That's my number one priority. Not how many times I can preach the word or how much word I can bring out. That mean nothing. If at that point, that means it's for me. It ain't for y'all. John 4 and 9, man. She said, then say if the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it thou being a Yahudim as drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Yahudim have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now, I just wanted that part to be manifested. See, he had no dealings with the Samaritans. Drop down to verse 25, because y'all know all the stuff in the interim. We don't have time. I'm already too long. The woman saith unto him, I know that the Mashiach come, which is called Hamashiach. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Yahushua saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. 
Upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seek thou or why talk thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went into the, her way into the city and say to the men, come see a man which told me all the things that I ever did. Is this not the Mashiach? They say they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meantime, his disciples prayed, saying, Master, eat. And he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Drop down to verse 39. Many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified. He told me all that I ever did. You know why we moved around to that? These people in that city believed just because the woman said he told me everything I ever done. They didn't hear no preaching. They ain't seen no miracles. They ain't seen nothing. They just heard this one woman say, this man told me everything I ever did. That's why he said, I'll move you to jealousy with your people, which are not a people. And we still ain't jealous. So when the Samaritans would come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them and abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Hamashiach, the Savior of the world. They said, now these strangers, right? Y'all know what it's saying, King. Them ain't bruised. Them the people the Babylonians put in the play, put in place. People who came into the land who were getting eaten up by lions because they didn't know the manner of the Elohim of that land. Yet they say they told him, he said, Yeah, we believe him now because we heard him. Yet Yasharal heard him and believed not. So a prophet ain't never going to be with honor amongst his own kin in his own country, in his own house. Because that's just what it, oh, I didn't read 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, my bad. Because that's just what it is. It's just what it is. And we have to accept, you got to take the word for what it says. When you take the word for what it says, then the things that occur to you, it won't shock you. Because you already know why it happened. You'll already know why it happened. Won't nothing shock you. 2 and 11, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 10. You are witnesses in Elohim also how kadeshly and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. And you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of, your, one of you as Abba doth his children, that, we, that you would walk worthy of Elohim, who have called you unto his kingdom and esteem. For this cause also thank we Elohim without ceasing, because when you received the word of Elohim, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of Elohim, which effectually work also in you that believe. That's the same way we could look at when you say the baptism of John. Was it of heaven or was it from men? And the Pharisees didn't want to answer because they said, if we say it for men, he's going to say why you didn't believe him. We say if it's of heaven, they're going to say why you didn't believe. He said if it was men, the people going to stone us because they took him as a prophet. And it said, the fair, it said that the, the publicans and the, and the uh, harlots went down justified because they got immersed by John because they believed the word. Them scribes and them Pharisees, they were offended at John. They rebelled and revolted. John was not accepted of these men because they were offended in him. Because they were offended in Elohim. They were offended in Yah at the end of the day. That's who they had the problem with. It was never the man. It was never the preacher. It was never the prophet. It was never the apostle. It was never the Messiah, the Christ, the Hamashiach. It was never Yahusha. It was always Elohim. It was always Yah. It was always the Most High who they had the problem with. For you, that's why he said you didn't receive it as a word of man, but you received it in truth as it was the word of Yah, the word of God, the word of Elohim, the word of salvation. For you, brethren, become followers of the synagogues of Elohim, which are in Yehuda, are in Yahusha HaMashiach. For you also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Yahudim, who both killed the master Yahusha and their own prophets and have persecuted us. And they please not Elohim and are contrary to all men. Con and again, you know why they contrary to all men? Because as we read in the law when we started, they contrary to Elohim because they walk contrary to him. But hallelujah for Yahushua and the word. Bless everybody out of the house of y'all. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, love all y'all. Appreciate everybody this evening. If you are willing, we'll pick this back up on the Shabbat. And with that being said, I'll say shalom and good evening to everyone. Where is that thing? There you go.